Hello, my name's Paul Howard. I'd like to show you my uh, fluting jig and my index system. Um, the index system consists of a disc with a row of 60 holes, 48, 36 and 14. The spindle size, this one is to fit a 33mm spindle, so it's a 34mm hole, but other sizes can be accommodated. The arm that locks the disc into place doesn't use a pin. It actually uses a 6mm ball that locates into a 5mm hole. I found that, um, and also then you can clamp it in position, so there's no backlash when you're using the index system. The router jig, you can fit different types of tool. A lot of tools have got um, a 43mm collar. They need to be a, a router with a, a demountable from the base or a trimmer that's demountable from the base. And the block that they fit into comes with a standard 43mm hole and also a 65mm hole because there's a lot of routers around that, or trimmers that will fit this uh, particular block. Other tools can be fitted with a parallel collar. Um, some of the die grinder type tools have smaller collars, so it's easy to make a, a, a simple split ring so you can clamp other tools into the system. The hole at the top carries the uh, depth stop bar, and that again, it clamps in and it can be adjusted. You can undo the screw at the top and you can slide this bar backwards and forwards to control the depth of your cut. On the front of the jig, you'll see there's a, a wooden bush. The wooden bush actually doesn't rotate. That stands still and it's supported by the arm assembly. And I make up, you make up the bushes to suit uh, different router cutters. The bush then actually controls the depth of the cutter. You can see the cutters just protruding through the end of the bush. And when we use the router in a few minutes, you'll see that you push the tool in, the bush comes up against the surface of the timber, and then you can move the router along and cut your flute. I've got a few examples of some work. You can use it, we're going to use it on faceplate work today, but you can also use it for putting flutes into uh, spindles. The index disc at the moment is held on with a behind the chuck, but there's no reason why you can't put a faceplate um, to hold the disc on and have your normal uh, drive centre protruding through the front of the faceplate. Or a lot of drive centres will actually fit into the, into the chuck. The other thing you can do, there's no reason why you can't actually put flutes into the face of the square section of a spindle. You can adjust the height of the cutter by undoing these two wing nuts and moving the system up and down. It also comes with a, a threaded rod that you can screw into the top of the block. So if you want to get very precise vernier adjustments, you can do that with the uh, threaded rod that goes in the top and there's a knob that goes on the top there so you can get the adjustment you need. If you're going across like an ingrain box, then sometimes you need to get it exactly in the middle to make the flutes look correct. That's the easiest way to set the jig up and adjust it. The other examples are boxes, put flutes into boxes, um, a wand, very, very small flutes in there. The only thing you need to be careful of when you're putting small flutes in something that size is it's, a, it's hollow inside, so you do your first flute, then you'd need to fill up the space with a piece of wood and move around and do the next one, fill that up, otherwise it all gets very, very flimsy. So that's sort of spindle work. But you can also do faceplate work. This has actually got 120 um, grooves in there or flutes in there. And then this one, this has got uh, 60 flutes in. So it opens up the possibility of decorating quite a lot of other pieces other than just putting flutes into spindles. So what I've got set up at the moment, I've got the index disc set up. Just one word on safety. In the instructions, and I do recommend it, is when you um, start using this system, you get into the habit of switching the router on and off. And it, I have done it myself. Occasionally, you'll try and start the lathe up, and because you've got the spindle locked up, so that can do a lot of damage to the disc and to the index arm. So what I recommend is that you disconnect the power from the lathe. Don't just turn it off. Actually disconnect the plug from the main supply, and then everything's safe, so you can't actually do anything wrong. So we start with, on this particular bowl, what I've got is I've got two steps. Uh, one on the inside and one on the outside. And if you look at the bush, we've got a small step in the bush. So I'm actually going to use these steps 
to give me a stop point for the flute. There's other ways of doing it. You could just mark a pencil line, take your flutes to where you want them to go. If they're not quite even, quite often I'll just put a little bead or a cove at the edge of the flute so you can turn stuff after you've put the flutes in. On a spindle, what I do on that is if I want to stop the flutes in these two positions, when I turn the spindle, I just leave a collar at either end and then I can bring the jig up and hit up against the collar. Then when all the flutes are done, I can turn those collars off. When you're using it on spindle work, you can actually turn this, the head assembly or the column will end up at the back of the jig. So you can actually have the foot straight across the bed of the lathe. And then you can, if you wanted to, you can actually put stops on the bed of the lathe to control the length of your flutes. On faceplate work, I usually use some sort of baseboard so it just makes it easier to move everything around and keep it under control. So I've got it all set up. I've got it set up on 60 holes. I usually, you can see I've got a couple of marks there. So I usually mark up with a pencil where my first flute's going to be on the smallest diameter. Then I'll index it round one position. So this is on the 30. So I can see with a six millimeter diameter cutter, those flutes are gonna miss each other. They're not gonna run into each other. And that's particularly important when you're doing spindles you really want to set the cutter up on the smallest diameter. You could work it out mathematically, but it's easier just to set the cutter in a position um, at the smallest diameter, put a mark on it, mark either side three millimeters if it's a six millimeter cutter, index it round and then mark your next position for the center of the cutter and have a look and see if they overlap. If they do, then you can adjust the amount of index positions you're gonna use. All right, so we'll start by putting the first flute in. One thing, one word about burning. I found that um, it's better to take several light cuts rather than plunge in and wait and then move on. So I'm going to try and keep the router on the move all the time. And then I'm slowly going to come in and pick away at the end so that I don't actually leave any burn marks in there. So I'll do the first flute. Keeping the cutter on the move all the time. Now I can index round one position. Just watching the depth of the bush so that I know when I'm at, at the full depth. So just carefully picking away at the ends and, and keep coming straight out. The other thing you'll notice is when you, um, we're on sort of, uh, probably on sort of side grain here, and when we get round to different areas on the grain, you'll find the cutter works slightly different. So you just have to be aware of that, that uh, sometimes it'll cut much easier in some areas than it does in others. So I need to come a little bit further in with this flute on this second one. Yeah, this flute's just a little bit short, so I'm just gonna take a little bit further onto that flute. Now I'm gonna move on to the next one. I'm using the 60 positions on this. Do one more. The other thing is, I'm holding the router on the base, so I'm keeping it firmly pressed down on the base of the baseboard. And if you hold it at the top, you're more inclined to tip the router. I have screwed an additional couple of uh, pieces on the bottom here. You could use MDF or plywood um, just to sort of spread the load out. But when you've got a baseboard on there, I probably don't need these fitted. I sometimes use these just straight across the bed of the lathe on small pieces of work. 
and um, that means I haven't got to worry about putting a baseboard on. But things like um, 18 millimeter plywood, old kitchen worktops, ideal platform for this. I've got one. This second, th third slot is just a, a little bit short on the outside edge, so I'll just move that and put that back and get it back in the right. Make sure they're all even. Then we'd go around, just do one more. So all those flutes now have been cut with the, the router set on the centre line. If I move it above or below centre, um, we move around to another part of the bottom of this bowl. If I now move it a distance below centre, only a small amount, what we'll find now is we'll get a line going at a slight angle. Let's come down a little bit lower. And one more. Last one. And of course, if you move the uh, cutter above center, the lines will go in the other direction. The other thing you could do if you wanted to, if that was a, a thin edge on that bowl, there's no reason why you couldn't take the cutter all the way through. So you'd end up with slots all the way through. Or you could um, put the slots on the inside at a slightly different angle if you went above. So the lines would actually cross over and you'd get a lattice arrangement. So there's lots of options to play with on the, with the router jig. Well, thank you for watching.